Hello and welcome. In today's video, we are going to cover all the lessons that we will take in chapter 1. And at the end of this video, you will have a main idea about all the important things that you have to know at the end of this chapter. In this chapter, we are going to talk about polynomial functions, their properties, and their applications. We will also explore concepts like zeros of polynomials, complex solutions, the fundamental theorem of algebra, and even touch upon higher order polynomial functions and polynomial systems. So let's get started. In topic one, first we are going to start with the definition of a polynomial function. A polynomial function is a mathematical expression built from variables and constants. The general form of the polynomial function is given by p of x equal a n x to the power of n plus a n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 1 plus 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 a 1 x to the power of 1 plus a naught or a 0 where n is called the degree of the polynomial function for example if n is equal to 2 the polynomial function is called a quadratic function. If n is equal to 1, the polynomial function is called a linear function. a n, a n minus 1, up to a naught, are constant, real, or complex numbers. They are also called the coefficients of the term. x, as you all know, is the variable that's in the expression x can be substituted by any given number if it's necessary. The zeros of polynomial function p of x are the values of x that makes this expression is equal to 0. They are also known as the roots or the solutions of the polynomial function, a polynomial equation p of x equal to 0. In this lesson, we are going to revise some techniques that you already learned in order to find the value of x when solving a quadratic equation, such as factorizing, taking the square root, or using the general solution equation to find the value of x. As for the higher order polynomial functions that has a degree 3 and above, we will learn different methods to find the number of solutions before starting solving these polynomial equations and we will learn some different theorems to help us solving these polynomial equations of higher order uh, polynomial. After that we will move to complex solutions. These complex solutions come into play when the solutions involve the imaginary unit i. What is i? i is a number that can be found by solving the equation i squared is equal to negative 1. Even if the coefficients of the polynomial are real, the solutions can be complex. This leads us to the fundamental theorem of algebra, which is a powerful statement that says every non-constant polynomial equation with complex coefficients has at least one complex root. In other words, no matter how complex the polynomial equation may seem, it will, make, it will always have a solution. Now let's talk about higher order polynomial functions. These are pro polynomials with degree greater than two. They can exhibit intricate behaviors such as multiple bends, loops, and turning points. A polynomial of degree 5, for example, its graph can twist and turn in unexpected ways, making it, making it a, a fascinating subject of study. Polynomial systems involve multiple polynomial equations with multiple variables. They allow us to solve multiple equations simultaneously in order to find a common solution that satisfies all the equations. These systems find applications in various fields, such as economics, physics, 
and engineering. For instance, when dealing with multiple interconnected variables in complex systems, polynomial systems provide an effective framework for analysis. In conclusion, polynomial functions are versatile mathematical tools that play a crucial role in a diverse area. They help us model real-world phenomena, solving equations, and understand complex relationships. The fundamental theorem of algebra guarantees the existence of solutions, including complex ones, for polynomial equations. Higher-order polynomial functions challenge us with their intricate behaviors, and polynomial systems provide insight into interrelated equations in different domains. I want to thank you all for listening, and I hope you had an idea about all the main things that we will cover in this chapter, and I will see you soon in the class. Inshallah.